biocontrol is basically the adverse effect of one species on another species. So when we use the tactic of biological control, we're basically harnessing nature. Uh, we're using the natural enemies of our pests to control that pest. One of the early leaders of biological control, uh, Carl Huffaker, mentioned that if we kill a natural enemy, we inherit its work. So for those of us who want efficiency and, and don't want to do all the work ourselves, using biological control is actually a, a very strong asset. When I came on here at the nursery, we had a very small biological program. We were doing very limited releases and um, we were struggling with it. And I decided to start expanding it to other crops, other organisms. Um, we developed the banker plant system specifically because we like the idea of a constant source of natural enemies. Banker plant systems are basically mini portable insectaries. They host a non-pest species, which in some cases can be the plant itself, or um, host insects for some of our parasitic organisms that we use. Um, they allow us to rear multiple generations of our biological control agents instead of buying and releasing on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Um, they're portable. We can move them around the crop. Uh, we can remove them from the crop when our pressure's down and uh, introduce them to other crops when we need them there. The mullen system is for the generalist predatory insect Dicyphus hesperus. As a generalist, they prey on several different species of pests. Their primary source is whitefly. In the absence of whitefly, they will eat thrips and spider mites as well. We adopted the biological program originally because we were facing insecticide resistance where we were spraying the highest rates allowed on chemicals and we were noticing mounting pressure. The bugs were building a resistance and you can't build a resistance to getting eaten or having eggs laid in you by a parasite. Um, the bios work. The biocontrol process is figuring out what works in your system. Start small, um, work with one thing, not 50 things, um, and, and keep it simple. When, I, when we first learned about predator-prey ratios, we knew that it was, they told us, well, you need 10 prey for every predator. Well, okay, so how do you figure out how many prey you have out there? And I, I was, you know, knocking my brain thinking, how can we count all these? How, we can, how can we get a population count in the field? And I finally just gave up with all that, and I said, let's, let's just go put some out. And if we start early enough, um, they'll find the right balance, and, and they did. Still have to monitor, though, and that's something we believe in strongly here is, is regular scouting, um, not just paying attention to the pests that we have, but also the, the beneficial insects that we have as well. We do have a, a large diversity of plants here. We have a couple thousand, give or take, it's always changing, uh, of varieties that we grow. Um, you can almost always find something in bloom here. And a lot of our native predators, surfed flies, the, the phalaces, the, the predatory mite that we use, a lot of times will survive on pollen. So you have an alternate food source for when prey populations are very low. By having a diversity of plants, you have food to keep these things always on the nursery so you don't have to buy them. I think the key ingredients for success for a biocontrol program is to have an overall commitment at every level in the nursery to invest up front in, in learning which pests you want to target and control and to have a monitoring program in particular um, that helps you uh, see when that insect first comes in or might. Just like other elements of integrated pest management, we want to see good identification and understanding of that pest that you have and its life cycle and what are the array of natural enemies that we can release. So we have good programs for things like whitefly and spider mites and fungus gnats, even thrips. Now folks need to learn how to distribute the uh, beneficials in their crop in a way that works, so they have to invest the, the labor to do that, so there is a cost to that. But I find with the monitoring and um, proper application, you sometimes have savings in other areas. Everyone always wants to know how the costs compare to using insecticides, and my answer is you have to determine how you define cost. In some instances, on paper, it is more. But 
you have to consider other things into your costs, such as production. When you do a chemical application, you have to close a greenhouse for anywhere from 4 to 48 hours for a restricted entry interval. During that time, no production can take place in that greenhouse. So you lose a day, maybe two days of production. You're also saving in labor costs using biological control agents because your chemical applicator is making far less frequent spray applications. The bugs are doing your job for you at night or when you're not here. And in some instances, I've talked with retailers who've surveyed their customers and found that some people are willing to pay a dollar or even two dollars more for a hanging basket if they know that it was grown safe for pollinators, no neonics, and with as few chemical applications as possible. One of the things I, I would love to see happen here with biological control is an investment in the resources at the universities so that we can do more research, we can do more extension and outreach uh, on the use of biological control. But I also think we need to invest in training of those who are working with biological control, both those who are working in the nurseries, but also that very important segment, those who are working with the insectaries and the distributors here. It's a great group of people who have a strong commitment to the use of biological control, but may not have had the same opportunities to invest in training uh, with advanced entomology and understanding the, the whole range of aspects that might be useful for successful implementation. Partnerships with like-minded organizations and people is a really critical factor here. I would like to say working with the Northwest Center for Alternatives to Pesticides is a perfect example of, of how that collaboration can work. So I, I think we need to really get behind uh, what is already a successful program. We know it works, so putting a little bit more investment in, getting a few more bodies out there, I think we could see tremendous reductions in the amount of pesticides in our greenhouses and nurseries in the future.